I am always looking for cheaper ways to grow. Plants that can be grown from seed, plants that can be divided after a couple of years, plants that self-seed around my garden. All of those things make gardening less expensive for me and frankly, a little bit less work too. Many of the plants that thrive in my garden are North American natives too. So here are 10 North American natives for you to consider in your garden as you're thinking about next year. So let's start with three plants that are fantastic for insects and birds. Number one is the sunflower. The sunflower is a fantastic North American native. It is easy to grow. It doesn't need a ton of water. In fact, it's pretty drought tolerant. There are varieties for every garden. Some are huge and mammoth. Some are tiny, but they all support native insects and the birds love them too. It's like planting a bird feeder. The second is milkweed. Every gardener in North America should be planting native milkweeds because milkweed is the host plant for monarch butterflies and our monarch butterfly population is threatened. So dedicate a little corner of your garden to milkweed. Make sure you're choosing native milkweeds and then just watch. You will see the monarchs will come. They lay their eggs on the leaves. When the larvae hatch, they turn into caterpillars that eat those leaves and it's the only food source they eat. They are not going to eat anything else in your garden because all they will eat is milkweed. Then they will pupate and turn into monarch butterflies. And then those butterflies will complete their life cycle and lay eggs again, maybe migrate to Mexico, depending on where you live. So plant some milkweed. The third plant on my list is blue grandma grass. This is the coolest plant. It is a host plant for skipper butterflies, but it is also just beautiful in the garden and birds love those seed heads. The seed heads look really cool all winter long. So if you're looking for something that adds winter interest, this is your native plant for that too. Next on my list are edible natives. Let's start with glass gem flint corn. This is the coolest variety of corn. Not only is it just gorgeous and makes a great decor plant in the fall, this corn variety can be used to make cornmeal and flour and popcorn which is fantastic too. It is an absolutely gorgeous ancestral native North American variety. The only thing you have to plan for, in my opinion with corn, is protecting it from raccoons. They can be pretty relentless, so plan for that in your garden. The second edible you should consider is wild bergamot. It is a hummingbird magnet. The bees absolutely love it. It can be used medicinally to treat headaches. You usually dry it and turn it into a tea, but it is one of those prairie wildflowers that is glorious and it's a perennial, so it will come back year after year. All of these plants can be grown from seed too, which is a handy thing and it can be a lot cheaper to grow them from seed. In my garden, I also grow plants that remind me of specific places. And one of my favorites is California poppies. I lived in California for a long time. We were there for several super blooms when whole hillsides and mountain ranges are just orange with the blooms of California poppies. They're gorgeous. They're also drought tolerant. They are pretty easy to grow and they're a lovely reminder of time spent in California. Another plant I grow because of a special location is Rocky Mountain Columbine, Aqualegia. It's the state flower for Colorado and that's my new home state. So I always make sure that I have a nice patch of it growing. It's relatively easy to grow once it gets established. And because it's a native plant to Colorado, it thrives here. The third native plant that reminds me of a special location is Black Eyed Susan or Rebecca. When I was a little girl, my mom got me all dressed up and took me out to this field. This is in Texas. And it was unbelievably beautiful, filled with Rebecca and she took some pictures of me standing in that field. And every time I see it, I think of my mom and I think of living in Texas. So it's a sentimental plant for me. 
and that's as good a reason as any to grow it. But it's also a host plant for insects and it's a native plant in North America. So all of those things together mean I have lots of Rebecca in my garden. I'm also planning out a new and revised cutting garden for next year. And I have two natives that I will for sure be growing in that. The first one is amaranth. Amaranth is actually also edible. It is huge and I'm going to have to plan for that. I grew it this year and it's really an amazing plant. You can eat the young leaves. You can also harvest the seed and it works as a grain. But for me, it is amazing as a cut flower in bouquets and arrangements. And that's what I mostly used it for. It is so colorful and it gets very, very tall. It's a cut and come again plant. So every time I snipped it off, suddenly a couple of days later, there was new growth at that place, which I actually wasn't expecting. So I'm really excited to have more amaranth in my garden next year. I will also be planting native agastache. I absolutely love this plant and have grown multiple varieties of it. The hummingbirds love it. The bees are crazy about it, and it makes a gorgeous cut flower. Not to mention, it smells amazing. It's minty, you can use the leaves to make tea, and it's a perennial, so it will come back year after year. And my whole goal as a gardener is to make gardening as easy as possible, so I lean in heavily on those perennials for sure. So that's my list of 10 North American natives to grow from seed for next year. Happy gardening.